Hey guys, real quick, the video I'm sharing here is actually taken from our membership program called Control Room. This is where we talk about things like upgrading your mindset, growing your studio business, and continuing to make better and better records. And this is just one of the weekly videos that we post inside that community. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, if you are someone who is interested in starting or growing your studio business, landing my, more clients, earning more money from audio, whether you're just getting started or whether you're already experienced in that and you just want to go bigger, further, get better clients, etc., then I think you're going to enjoy a free workshop we're running starting in just a couple weeks. It's called the Studio Growth Workshop. Click the link in the description below to register early for it. And if you do that, I'm, I'm going to be sending you three multi-track sessions that you can download, mix for yourself, and use in your own public portfolio to uh, show potential clients what you're capable of. So that's at the link in the description here. And uh, without further ado, here's the video. What's going on, Control Room? This is the December episode of the Mindset Frequency Upgrade entitled The Number One Secret to a successful life. And this is probably the most important message so far that I've shared with you. Maybe the most important message I could share with you, at least one of the most important. And when I say success, by the way, the secret to a successful life, I don't mean just the shallow types of success like money, career, business success, things like that. I mean, it includes that. That is definitely something that is positive and worthwhile and worth pursuing, and this topic includes that, but it goes much further, includes success in your own personal happiness, your own fulfillment, your relationships, your family, basically all the pursuits that you have across your entire life, bringing it all under one umbrella and succeeding not just in one area, but in all areas. And this is the number one secret to that that I wanna share with you, and it is this. Radical personal responsibility. And I say radical because it's not just personal responsibility. It's not just the normal sense of responsibility. I'm talking about radical responsibility because almost no one lives like this. Now, when we think about responsibility, you know, typically what's probably coming to mind for you is things like being on time, taking care of your stuff, you know, doing the chores and the things that need to be done around the house fulfilling your duties, doing the things that you are obligated to, um, the things that you've said that you're going to do and follow through on and taking responsibility for those and just being a responsible citizen, right? We have a lot of things that just were, we were taught growing up of what responsible means. But, you know, what I'm talking about here is not typical responsibility in that sense. What I'm talking about is taking full ownership over every condition, every circumstance, and every choice you've made in your life. Now, here's an example. I read this book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, I believe was his name. And this is a psychologist, I believe. He ended up in concentration camps in uh, Germany during the Second World War, and obviously was, was tortured. He sur ended up surviving but he was in those camps for years. And so he got to basically experience that full firsthand and also uh, witness other people's um, experience with that, which is obviously very horrific. But he came out of it relatively, at least mentally, intact. And you could even say mentally unscathed. And he kind of, he reports in his book, uh, his ultimate conclusion is basically that no matter what was happening around them, all the horrible things that they were subject to and had to endure him and, and whatever people he was imprisoned with, he picked up on a difference. He said there were people who still somehow, even within that scenario, managed to maintain some semblance of joy and their own identity and their own um, dignity as humans, whereas other people just gave up and those people... Uh, died a lot quicker and a lot more regularly um, from sickness, disease, all those things, whereas the people who maintained their dignity, their identity, um, had a greater chance of survival. He noticed this and he started to pick up on these themes and he con concluded that ultimately there's one thing that regardless of what other people are forcing on us, there's one thing that they cannot steal and they cannot take away and that is 
what's in here and what's in here. And the beautiful thing, the, the greatest gift that we have in life is choice. And this explains why people like Viktor Frankl and other people that maybe you know in your life who have gone through some really horrible circumstances in their life and still emerged okay or maybe even maybe even better off because of the way they reacted to it. Whereas other people deal with maybe minor inconveniences and minor issues and are just totally um, taken out of the game of life because of that. And it really comes down to the choices that you make up here and the responsibility that you're willing to take for the circumstances in your life. So the natural question that this brings up is, well, what about the things that you actually can't control, right? What about things that people are doing to you? The thing, you know, geez, weather, natural disaster, the things you can't control. Well, here's the thing. Of course, yes, yes, there are things in our lives that we cannot control, circumstances that we do not anticipate, that we do not necessarily even influence. Um, I'm going to argue that that's a very minority um a minority part of the, the things that happen in our life. Um, most things are impacted by our choices, at least in some way or another. You know, even if someone rear ends you on the road, well, you still chose to go out at that time. You still chose to drive your car, um, all that stuff, right? And sure, you could not have foreseen this happening, but still, you know, you chose to drive. You chose to take the risk that one day you might get hit. Um, and ultimately, Here's the thing though, uh, to me, it's like whether or not you actually did cause the scenario or not is kind of irrelevant because if you are constantly blaming others, if you're constantly blaming the circumstances for the situation, then you have no control. You have no power, right? If it's someone else's fault or the fault of maybe not a person, but just the weather or some random scenario that happened or some political situation that's causing you problems, um, if you just blame that, then it just stops. Like you have no control. You have no course of action. You have no way to influence the situation if it's only their fault. But by taking responsibility, it puts you back in control. Now you have a choice. Once you take responsibility, all of a sudden that opens up doors of, okay, I'm taking responsibility for this. I'm taking ownership of this scenario. Even if I didn't cause it, I'm still going to take ownership. That's leadership, by the way but I'm going to take ownership of this scenario and therefore I am going to be the one who chooses what happens now. And the opposite of this is, you know, the victim mentality, right? It's, you know, a lot of people live their lives this way, kind of almost half asleep, just victims to everything, just constantly reacting to what's happening in their life. And as long as you're a victim, you have no power right? Victims by just definition, you, you are under, you're subject to someone or something else's whims and desires and actions. And the people who are victims are basically just blown in the wind by the decisions of the people um, who are actually taking ownership and taking action on things uh, for good or for bad, right? So this, you know, this applies to relationships too. You know, I can't tell you, you know, I'm sure, you know, I'll open up and, you know, obviously, uh, every relationship, uh, every marriage, whatever is your situation, but I'm sure you've dealt with problems, fights, struggles, whatever. Um, and there, our tendency is always to blame the other person, right? You know, it's like, oh, well, if they if they would only realize X, Y, Z, if they would only see it from my perspective, blah, 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 it's, it's their fault, they started it, whatever. Of course, I, uh, of course, I've done that. Of course, I'm not perfect. I still do this. But once I, I tried to adopt this, this ethic of personal responsibility and it just changes everything. Cause even if, even if someone or your partner or someone, your friend or whatever, even if they do initiate some situation that's causing problems, if you ask yourself, how can I take responsibility for this? How can I own my part of this and just put aside whatever they are doing or have done or have said for now and just take my own part in this and maybe even more, maybe own the whole thing and decide that regardless of whether that person is going to apologize or, or change their mind or whatever, regardless of that, I'm taking responsibility for how the situation is handled. And again, that all of a sudden opens up freedom to move past the scenario, to choose your outlook, to choose to apologize, to choose to uh, make a different decision, to choose to do something that works for both of you guys or, or whatever, you know, whatever it is. I'm just trying to come up with examples here, but Again, the main point is that by having a victim mentality, constantly blaming other people, blaming outside circumstances, 
then you're stuck. You can't do anything. All you can do is hope that those circumstances will change, change, hope that those people will do something different, hope that those, that someone else will come and rescue you and give you whatever you need, whether it's money, emotional support, a job, whatever. You're constantly counting on people outside of you to provide that. Uh, and you're just, you're stuck, you know, hopefully, hopefully you'll get lucky and things will go well, but guess what? Everyone else is thinking that too. Um, so you're not really going to be able to create the things you want unless you take radical personal responsibility. Uh, I recently was watching a video, I think, uh, just came across it randomly. It was like, you know, rich celebrities who lost it all. And one of them was Johnny Depp. And it really struck me that he, you know, had made, I think something like 400 or 500 million dollars over the course of his career and was basically bankrupt, um, had all these sorts of different bad habits and everything. But what does he do? He sues his managers for giving him bad advice. So here's a guy who makes half a billion dollars in his lifetime, still manages to mess it up, make choices uh, that cause him to lose all of his money. And, uh, you know, what does he do? First thing, he blames his managers. Well, they didn't, they didn't tell me what to do. They didn't give me the good advice, you know, and that's, a, and ex I'm giving you these extreme examples of, you know, the, the concentration camps and Johnny, you know, someone who's making so much money and then still blows it. You know, it's easy for us to see, oh, obviously like he made bad choices. He's an idiot, you know, but in our lives, it's simpler. You know, maybe we're not blaming our managers for not teaching us how to manage our millions of dollars. Um, but maybe it's our parents. Um, are you broke because your parents didn't teach you to manage money? Maybe they didn't, but still, if that's all, if that's as far as you're going to go, then that's it. You're going to stay broke. But if you say, okay, well, my parents didn't teach me to manage money, but you know what? I didn't put any time into learning it either. So either I'm going to do that and I'm going to make different decisions and different choices, um, or I'm going to stay exactly where I'm at. So that's, you know, money is a really easy one to see this. I think that a lot of people just blame the government or bosses or whatever situation for not having enough money or being broke. It could be you know, I'm broke because these emergencies happened and that's just the way it is. Now I'm in tons of debt and I couldn't control it and it's just, you know, that's the way it is. Okay, those things may be true, but what are you doing now? How are you going to take responsibility for that and move forward? Even guys, maybe what might resonate with you is, you know, maybe you're not doing the work you love and you say that because, you know, I'm not doing the work I love because... I have to pay all the bills and I have to support my family. First of all, try to watch the language there. What if you shift it around? I don't, I don't have to provide for my family. I get to provide for my family. I choose to provide for my family. That really changes the flavor of the whole discussion, right? You know, we make choices. There are very few things that are done to us, especially in this society that we're living in now. So again, if that resonates with you, like, listen, you chose the family. You chose the work. You chose to have a lifestyle that requires that you pay these bills. And you're responsible for that. And you can choose to make different choices. I recently heard a speaker. I love the quote he said. He said, living an easy life requires making hard choices. And that goes along with this ethic of personal responsibility, radical personal responsibility. Um, so whatever it is, it could be your health, your job, your, your career, your business, your money, your relationships. You know, it's like, uh, again, we can see it in these obvious examples of, you know, someone might say, oh, I'm just overweight because my whole family is and it's just in my genes. And, you know, it's like, okay, maybe that, maybe that is true. Maybe it's a lot harder for you um, not to gain weight than it is for some other people. Obviously that plays a factor. Um, but again, if that's the end of the story, then you're going to be unhealthy your whole life. But what if you take responsibility for that and say, this is my, this is what I was born with. I'm going to own it. I'm going to take responsibility and I have to work harder to stay healthy, but that's what I'm going to do because that's the choice I'm making. So I think I've given you enough examples here, guys, but just remember, regardless of what is happening externally, you are ultimately in control of what happens up here and you can choose to give away that power to other people and other powers and other, uh, scenarios and just random happenings, or you can choose to maintain that power and not let anyone else impact that. Um, and remember, uh, by taking responsibility, you actually have power, you have choice, you can choose the next outcome, you know, and although we might not always choose what happens to us, 
or we cannot control what other people do, we can always control how we respond in here and in here, and then therefore uh, how we expond, respond externally. We can always control our response, and victims live by chance, and people who take responsibility, they actually have the power to impact things and change things in their own lives and in the world around them. And guys, you know, I might sound a little bit um, pretty strong on this. This is because I really, I really think this is one of the most important things um, in life, the most important values you can adopt. And it's something that I've adopted, but I don't, I don't do this perfectly. In fact, I do it far from perfectly. I'm constantly catching myself or maybe my wife will catch me where I'm just, you know, playing the victim, you know, just blaming other people, blaming circumstances rather than taking personal responsibility. But at least it's really drilled in my head now. And I try to catch myself in those moments and think of how am I responsible for this? Uh, what is my role in this? How can I uh, make a different choice and change the reality and change the outcome? And, and that that core value, adopting this core value of radical personal responsibility um, has really, it changed my business, uh, allowed me to increase my income, changed my relationships, uh, and just my own personal happiness. You know, in friendships and relationships and stuff, I used to be controlled by other people's moods. You know, if if someone I was with was grumpy and negative, then it would just make me grumpy and negative. And now when that happens, I try to catch myself. I try to say, okay, this person's feeling a certain way. That doesn't mean I have to feel that way. I can choose to, I can choose the mood that I'm going to be in. I can choose the thoughts that I'm going to think. And that is really the ultimate gift that we have as humans and something that I really don't want you to forget and don't want you to give up and lose control over. So I want to leave you with this poem, guys. I pulled it up on my computer here. This is a poem called Invictus. It says, out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. So two action items for you today on this video. Number one, if you are going to adopt this value of radical personal responsibility into your own life, then I want you to leave a comment below on this video and say in all caps, I am responsible. So comment below, I am responsible. And secondly, try to identify one area, one thing in your life, one scenario where you are not taking responsibility, but you, in fact, are playing the victim and you are blaming others. What is that area? Try to find just one in your life and uh, share it with the group here. And if you have the guts to declare that, to declare that reality and declare that you're going to change that and take responsibility, then you're going to have the power and the strength to change it. So I hope you enjoyed this month's Mindset Frequency Upgrade, guys. Looking forward to engaging with you in the comments below and seeing what you guys have to say about this. Remember, comment below, I am responsible, and then one area that maybe you're lacking responsibility and you're going to change that going forward. All right, take care.